वाटलेस तर आवाज येतो हॅलो
Yes. I welcome all the dignitaries on the behalf of MP Kavi Rahuri. Yes. yes. Our today's program start with the our university song. Thank you. A lecture today, a lecture on Fulbright Fellowship opportunity to the US. For this lecture, today we got our guest, Ryan Pereira, sir. Regional Officer, US and India Educational Foundation, Fulbright Commission in India, Mumbai. I request our Honorable Vice Chancellor, PG Patil sir, please felicitate him by offering shawl and bouquet. Thank you, sir. Then I request our associate Dean Bhakre, sir. Please felicitate our honorable vice chancellor, PG Patil, sir. Then I again request Bhakre, sir. Please felicitate our Dean Chavan, sir. 
ഇപ്പൊ ഓഫറിംഗ് ബുക്ക് താങ്ക് യു സർ Devkar sir, is it visible? I have shared the PPT here. Devkar sir, unmute yourself, please. Is the slide is visible to you, sir? Yes, visible, visible. Yeah, thank you, sir. റീജിയനൽ ഓഫീസർ with the USIEF so the USIEF logo that you can see was formed 73 years ago by the Indian and the US government to administer the Fulbright fellowships there you go okay okay i want to start by expressing my sincere gratitude to the honorable vice chancellor and for arranging this talk and the wonderful work done by dean chavan in bringing you all all together i should tell you all that i've been working with this organization for 12 years and this is my first visit to ahmednagar rahuri so it's a honor to be here today and i reason i'm here today is to talk to you all about the fulbright fellowships there's lots of really good work going on right here in this campus and there are opportunities to go to the us on a fully funded fellowship uh provided by the us and indian governments and that's what we want to talk to you all about we want to encourage you all to apply for these fellowships So the Fulbright Fellowships was started by the US Senator J W Fulbright in 1946 and his vision was that after World War II one way to heal the world is to bring scholars from different countries to the US let them experience the US and then they can go back to their home countries and make a difference so since that vision it has spread to over 160 countries in the world india has one of the largest fulbright programs in the world and the reason india has one of the largest fulbright programs in the world is because in 2008 the indian government matched the us government in terms of contribution towards this program so we used to give about 30 scholarships every year now we are giving 130 scholarships a year so to indian citizens so that's the importance that the indian government has seen in such a program and so the indian government is supporting it we need your support to apply for these fellowships it's there 
So there are two main types of grant op offerings. The one with the blue background, the Fulbright Nehru and Fulbright Kalam fellowships at the doctoral, postdoctoral, and academic and professional excellence award. These are funded jointly by the two governments, Indian and the US government. The ones on the gold background, those are still funded exclusively by the US government. And they include the Hubert Humphreys, the Fulbright Foreign Language Teaching Associate Assistant Program, two Fulbright programs for school teachers, and the Fulbright Scholar in Residence Program. But I'll be focusing on the Fulbright Nehru and Fulbright Kalam Fellowships. So before we get started with the actual fellowships, we want to talk to you all about what we are looking for in the applicants. Okay. So what we're looking for is somebody who has a high level of academic and professional excellence. So publications, good research going on. That's what we're looking for. We do look for somebody to have some proficiency in the English language. Now, when we talk about proficiency in the English language, we're not saying that you should be experts in English. The reason we ask for that is because when you go to the US university, you should be able to communicate with the host institution about your research and things. So that's why we some level of English is required. Then if you're employed, then it has to go through the proper channels. Very, very important. Since this fellowship is for Indian citizens, it's not available for people who have applied for the US green card. They are not eligible. And it's always the preference will be given for people who have not had exposure to the US before. And that's why I'm here today. Because I know that most of y'all are doing good work, but I've never experienced the US before. So we want to give you all the opportunity to apply for these fellowships. So very briefly about the master's fellowship. This is for somebody who's done the equivalent of a four year undergraduate. So either three year undergraduate and one year of masters or one year diploma program. But we require three years work experience. So you're not eligible to apply soon after your studies. You have to have three years work experience. And there are 11 fields that are supported. So environmental science is one of the fields that might be of interest to some students. With the master's fellowship, we provide up to 80,000 US dollars in support over two years. So that's usually enough money to pay for your entire master's program. For the doctoral, postdoctoral, and academic and professional excellence awards, we have a much wider range of fields. And as you all can see, the top one is agricultural sciences. So that's why I'm here. And then we have bioengineering and chemistry and other programs as well, environmental science. So, so for, how many of you all are registered for PhD here? Any P registered for PhD? Oh, good, good, good. That's why I like that. I like to see this. So if you're registered for a PhD at an Indian Institute, then you can apply for this fellowship and you have to be registered before November 1, 2022. So about six months ago, two, three, four months ago. Okay? You're eligible to, if you apply for this fellowship and you get it, you can go to the US for anywhere between six months to nine months, do part of your PhD thesis in the US, and then come back and complete your PhD from this university. Okay, so that's for, and the deadline to apply is going to be around mid-July this year. For those two people who finished their PhD recently within the last four years, then they are eligible to apply for the postdoctoral fellowship, and here you can go to the US for anywhere from eight months to two years. Okay. Again, the deadline to apply will be usually mid-July. And as you can see, agricultural science is very, very important uh, for us. For the faculty, we have the Academic and Professional Excellence Award. 
So here you can go for anywhere between four months to nine months. But with the faculty, you have the, for the doctoral and the postdoctoral, you go there to do a research project. For the faculty, you'll have the option of doing research, teaching, or doing a combination of research and teaching. So it's much broader scope for you. And this is an agricultural university and climate is very important. So the one of the recently, about five years ago, we instituted the Fulbright Cullum Climate Fellowship, again, at the doctoral, postdoctoral and academic and professional excellence award. The deadlines for this is not yet decided, but it might be either mid-August or mid-September. And for some, some of the senior faculty, we have, this was uh, provided just last year, the Fulbright. So with all the other fellowships, you get to pick which university you want to go or which lab you want to be at. This one, the university is already set because they are providing funding for it, the uni Emory University, and it's global integration, the broad theme of global integration. It's meant for senior faculty to go there for four months in the broad region of global integration. And then we have a similar one on public policy, which is not for this at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. For the deans and the leadership, we have the International Education Administrators Seminar. So this is a program where the leadership uh, can go to the US for up to two weeks and visit eight to 10 universities in the US and start the discussions on collaboration, joint research projects and things like that. So signing the MOUs and all. So this is for the leadership. The Hubert Humphreys is the first, the only one I'm going to talk about that is not just funded by the US government. It's again, a very, very prestigious fellowship. You go to the US for 10 months. Uh, here again, agricultural and rural development is part of the, is supported, one of the fields that's supported. With this fellowship, the idea is to improve the, the impact that people can have when they come back to India. So if you're thinking of, you have these big plans of making, making India better, this is something that will help you. So you will talk with government officials how to have a bigger impact to your projects and things like that. So that's what it's meant for. So a lot of times we have the IAS people, IPS people, NGOs and all going for this, but researchers can also apply and have got this award in the past. So what does what do we provide as part of this uh, the fellowship? You'll get the monthly stipend. The level of the stipend will depend on what whether you're going for a doctoral, postdoctoral, or faculty level, and it also depends on which city you're going to be based at. If you're in New York City or San Francisco, the living expenses are so high, so the stipend will be a little higher. Then if the university requires any fees to have you associated with it, that will also be paid by us, the Fulbright Fellowship. We'll provide the round trip ticket from your home city to the US and back. And we'll also provide the health insurance while you're in the US as per the US government standards. So everything for all these fellowships is fully funded. Okay? There's absolutely no expense on your part. What you all have to do is put in a competitive application. And we're gonna see that in just a minute. That is where your effort will be at. So right now on February 2nd, in 10 days time, we're going to announce the new cycle for people who are interested in going in August, 2024. And why do we have such a long one year cycle? That's what I'm gonna talk about. So we're going to make the announcement in February 22nd, it's February 2nd, 2023. Then you send in your applications by the deadline. So for masters, it's May 15th. For doctoral and postdoctoral, it's mid-July. And for some of the Fulbright column, it might be September. Once we receive the applications, they are segregated by the field and the level. So those, all those applying for the doctoral studies in agricultural science will be put together and sent to two subject experts, 
both from the US and Indian side, who will read all those applications and grade them. Then we'll put those grades together. And then the top few candidates from each category will be called for an interview, usually in Delhi or might be online. Those interviews will happen between August and December this year. Once you're selected after the interview, then your papers are sent to the US and they will place your, make sure you've got your placement at a US university, <coughs> excuse me, or a research lab in the US. And once that is finalized, we will, the grant documents will be issued. And once the grant documents are issued, we will process the visa for you. So you'll be going to the US on a J-1 visa. Thank you. And people will leave from July, 2024 onwards. So it is a one year process to get this award and go to the US. Even during the pandemic, we had Indians going to the US on this fellowship. So last year we had our Indian Fulbrighters at 27 of the 50 states in the US. We had the largest numbers in Massachusetts, uh, California and in New York. Okay. But we also had Fulbrighters going to lesser known states. You all said you'll have your MOUs with Washington State University. We had Fulbrighters going there as well. So they are going to all these different states. So what do you have to do to apply for these fellowships? All the application process is online and the step-by-step -step instructions will be provided on our website. And I'll talk to you all about that. So there are lots of resources that are available to help you all with this application. The best resource will be the USIEF website because you get the instructions. We also have mentoring programs in April and May, and they'll be online so you all can join them, where people who've got this award will talk about how they wrote their proposal, what are things they did to strengthen their application. So you get insights from people who've actually won the award. On our website, we also have the list of the last three years of our Indian Fulbright Award winners with their projects. So you could see where they are from, what their projects were, and understand whether where you stand in this. Then we have our social media, we have YouTube channel, and if you can identify US universities where you'd like to be placed, please let us know in your application. So when you're putting in your application, it's really, really important to put in the effort. It has to be a competitive application. So put in very clear and detailed research objectives. Now in India, sometimes we are under the impression that I need to impress the, the committee. So I'm going to put six or eight objectives. You can't do six or eight objectives in six months. So it needs to be reasonable and something that can be done on time. Okay? Don't try to impress the committee. They are scientists themselves. They know what can be done and what cannot be done in the duration that you're going to be given. This is funded by the two governments. So they want to know you might be doing really good work, but is it relevant to our country? So you need to be able to explain why it's relevant to India, the project. Okay? And if it's relevant to the US or the university, US university, even better. But that impact of your project is really, really important. Talk about how it's going to be completed in the time that you asked for. If you're saying nine months, what is your timeline? Your first objective, how long it's going to take? Your second objective, how long it's going to take? Mention that. The more details you give, the better. You all should also mention about how your background has prepared you to complete this project. Okay? So it's not that I want to do artificial intelligence. One my background is in biochemistry. Okay? So it's not going to work. So talk about how your background, your, your education and your research has prepared you to do this project that you're proposing that you want to do. 
And if you interacted with US universities and they've agreed to host you, then mention their names in the order that you would like to be placed. For the faculty who are going on the teaching uh, fellowship, they should be familiar with the US pedagogy and how to structure the syllabus. So they should have a proper, well-defined course syllabus with the specific topics. So in the first week, I'm gonna talk about this topic. Second week, I'm gonna talk about this topic for the entire duration of the four months. They should also talk about how teaching this course in the US is gonna help them when they come back to India. And then we have, or oh, everybody is required to submit reference reports. Usually it's three reference reports. Uh, if you're a PhD candidate, doctoral student, then one reference report has to be from your PhD guide. And then you have two other reference reports to ask. Now, again, it's the mentality we have, we have learned to deal with is we believe that the higher the designation, the more impactful the letter of recommendation. And that is not true. What we are looking for is people who know your work. So people you've done projects with, people you've taken classes with. It's all very well to get the chief minister to write a letter for you. But if that person doesn't know who you are, it's not impactful. Okay? So don't try to impress the committee by getting the high, we have vice chancellor here, not, no offense, but you don't have to approach the vice chancellor to get a letter. If you've done work with the vice chancellor, then sure you can get that letter, but it's not required. Get faculty members who you've worked with. They have more than enough to provide this letter. What are we looking for? So we're always, all our fellowships are always based on merit. Okay. There's no quota system, nothing. It's always pure merit of the project. So merit of the candidate is very important. What's your training that you've had so far? And the merit of the Fulbright project. How is it gonna impact India when you come back? The third point we're gonna look at is, what is the need to do this project in the US? And I'll give you all an example. Uh, for those who are doing uh, biomolecular biology and biotechnology, you all generate uh, samples uh, in the lab, and then you all start doing the experiments using those samples. So what is stopping you all from generating those samples in India, and then taking those samples to the US and doing the high level experiments with the fancy equipment there. So when you're talking about the timelines, you need to be able to explain that because you will be asked that. From a funding point of view, we'd rather give, while the postdoctoral fellowship is for two years, we'd rather give two one-year postdoctoral fellowships rather than one two-year because we're spreading the wealth and getting more value. So you, but it's not saying that we're going to not give to your fellowships. We will, but you need to be able to explain and articulate why you need that two years. Talk about the impact of the fellowship of the project and what is your motivation to complete this project. That's where we're going to look at the application and the reference letters to understand the motivation of the candidate. The overarching goal of the Fulbright program, and I mentioned it briefly, was to heal the world. So the, the technical word we use is mutual understanding between the people of the United States and of other countries, including India. So when you're going on a Fulbright pro fellowship, it's really important that we understand how are you going to contribute to the US university as an ambassador? How are you going to spread the Indian culture to the people in the US university? Are you going to share the festivals? Are you going to share the culture? Are you going to share the food? That's what we want to know because that is really, really important for us. We want to know whether you can communicate uh, reasonably well and we are, it's really, really important commitment to serve the country when you come back. 
Now for some bad news. The Fulbright Fellowships are extremely, extremely prestigious. Part of the reason why they're prestigious is because they're not easy to get. Last year, we got 2,000 applications and we gave 138 awards. So about just seven out of every 100 got this fellowship. But the nice thing is we're trying very hard to balance the number of awards given to women. So last year, we had 46% of our awards given to women nominees. Now, when we say 46%, it doesn't mean that there, there's a quota system. These are still high quality applications. It just happened to be from women. So what you're applying for, the, the postdoctoral fellowships received the highest number of applications and we gave about 33 awards. So about five out of every uh, 100 got it. The Fulbright doctoral also received a very high number of applications and we gave 37 awards. Okay. So it really depends on what you're applying for. And when we're saying 33 and 37 awards, that's spread across multiple fields. We try to diversify the fields that are also supported. So as I mentioned, we're going to be announcing this award uh, on February 2nd. For all the details, you can get it on our website, usief.org.in. I've got a few handouts with the details of the fields that we are supporting and the link as well and the website again. So once again, thank you, Vice Chancellor, sir, for having me here. We look forward to receiving applications from this university. So thank you very much. Any questions? So, uh, while we wait for questions, I'm going to take photographs as well. Seven. Yeah. See, we do receive a lot of applications. Our funding is limited. We do get a lot of funding, but it is limited. And for example, for the master's fellowship, we give about 10 fellowships and $80,000. That's $800,000 gone right there. So because of that, our funding is limited and we're trying to spread the wealth. Uh, we wish we could do more, but that is what we have to do with. And it, the stipend one gets is reasonable. So because of that, it's because of budgetary issues, we, that's what we can provide. And even with the 138, it's one of the largest in the world. Most of the countries have five or 10. Because the Indian government has backed it, that's why, and the Indian government is one of only two or three countries that matches the US for this program. So we wish we could do more, but part of the reason why I'm here is, and it's really, really important. We get a lot of applications from the IITs and other big name universities, but we want to see more applications from the second and third tier cities. We want to see applications from other universities. Just because people are at IIT doesn't mean there's not good work going on elsewhere. And we want to showcase that by getting applications. And that's why we take the effort to come here and do this talk so that we can encourage you. And for those doctoral, there are so many doctoral students here. What's the worst thing that can happen? You don't get the award. But by putting in the effort to put your project proposal and everything in place, you've already got the framework of what you need to do for your PhD. So that is still going to be with you. The downside is quite good as well, okay? because you will have your ideas of what you need to do for your PhD. So I encourage you to serious, give it a serious 
thought about applying for these fellowships. Yes. Uh, having a having a good publication is not going to hurt you, but having a publication itself is not a requirement for the fellowship. Because a lot of times some people do work with a company or something where they cannot publish it because it's uh, they cannot publish uh, data like that. So having a publication is not a requirement. If you have a peer reviewed paper published, then it looks good, but not a requirement. Uh, and having an academic profile is only one part of it. Having a good impact of the project, that's far more important. So focus more on your project statement and the work you're going to do rather than what you've already done in the past. Yes. Uh, if you're going to be defending your thesis, the Viva, no, I'm just saying by the July deadline, then you'll be eligible to apply for the postdoctoral fellowship to go next August. Okay. Whether you should put in your application now or work, that's completely up to you. Okay. You have to decide for yourself what's best for your career. Uh, we'll always be here. Uh, that being said, it is a competitive fellowship. So putting in an application this year while you're eligible, in case you do not get it, at least you'll get some understanding of what you might be able to do to improve it when you're ready to go the following year. Okay, so nothing's gonna hurt you by putting in an application, except that it's gonna take time. So I would recommend, and first and foremost, congratulations on almost getting done. Having gone through the PhD process, we know it's not easy, so congratulations, good luck. That's completely okay. You can, as long as you're applying within four years of getting your PhD degree, you will be applying for the postdoctoral fellowship. Okay, good. I, I, I would add a little thing to that. If you're, please sit down, please sit down, be comfortable. Okay. If you're going to be applying for a job, that's all very well. But the job, and you're going to do a postdoc later on, the job should have some aspect of research. Because if you're away from research for two years, then asking, hey, I want a postdoc to do research will be a little more challenging. So as long as you're still involved with research, no problems at all. Good. Yes, sir. Okay, that's it. I, I purposely leave things out because I want these questions to come. Uh, that's a very good question. What I did not mention is that we say the reference, the, the letters from the US universities are good. They're good, but they're not mandatory. You can apply without having a US university confirm that they'll host you. When you're filling in the application form, you're asked to list three or four universities in the US where you would like to be placed. We have a partner in the US called the Institute of International Education. If you're selected for the award, they will help place you in one of those three or four universities. If, which, what level are you at? Doctor. So as a doctoral student, you're reading papers, right? In each paper, they mention which university and which department the authors are from. 
So you know where they are from. What is stopping you from writing to them? Okay, because all their information is available on the university's website, email address. So if you know universities where you would like to be situated, write them a short two-line email. Uh, I read your paper. I'm very interest, interested in your work. I'm applying for the Fulbright Fellowship. Uh, for a, I'm doing my doctoral studies in this. If I get the fellowship, can you host me in your lab? That's it. And if they say yes, then you could say, what is your PhD thesis about and all that and take it further. But write to them. Nothing's stopping you from doing that. Well, again, what's the worst that will happen? They, they won't respond, but there are others. Okay, so that's how you will look. And doing that little bit of work shows one of the things I was talking about is the motivation. So it shows that you've taken the initiative that you really want this, you want to do this work. So it's not going to hurt you to do that. Good questions. <laughs> so I, I'll add one more point, okay? I'll add one more point. Uh, There is one chat, two chats. No. Yeah, that's not a question. Sir, anybody want to ask the question? Any faculty member or any student? Please. Those are joined online. Yeah. So, one thing I want to end with is very often people have an inferiority complex. Okay. How can I, working at MK, MPKV, compete with somebody at the IIT? And that is just wrong. Okay. Don't ever sell yourself short. Y'all are doing really good work. And as I mentioned, this fellowship is to give people an opportunity who would not otherwise have the opportunity of going to the US. The people at the IITs get all the opportunities they want. And that's why we're here to encourage y'all. Don't think that I can't compete. Take the chance. Okay? It's not, I'm not saying y'all are going to get it, but take the chance. Okay? And don't ever think that I'm not good enough for such a prestigious award. So I wish you all all the best. And once again, thank you very much for this opportunity to talk to you all. Good luck in your research work. Respected Honorable Vice Chancellor of MPQ Rahori, Dr. Dr. Patil sir, uh, our uh, speaker from the US State uh, and India Education Foundation, together Dr. Ryan Pereira, and other Associate Dean PJ, uh, Director of Extension Education, Dr. Naruti, other faculty members, students and dear my friends. Now today we had a lecture from Dr. Ryan regarding Fulbright Fellowship. Now you can see the last, I think uh, within two months, our Honorable Vice Chancellor has a meeting we, in the governor office. And when they had the meeting, our uh, Vice Chancellor has given different type of points and uh, some research area. On that basis, US consulate Consider as the MPKV is the very good university, and we have to give the chance to the our our uh, MPKV our student to go abroad and take the lead in the science. In science is not only the science is agriculture science. Those students are doing their degree 
post degree phd and other degrees also there in agriculture sector so us ambassadors he has sent one representative dr ayan here to give the some full bright uh, fellowship how we can apply which area we can apply and we should not concentrate only other competitive exams which are only for the in, in india only maharashtra but there are so many fields in agriculture where you can make your career bright more than the is officer i will say because our vice chancellor is giving very good chance to us not only the student also for the faculties you might seen there are some the faculty member they can go for the two weeks four weeks and six week even two years also for post doctorate so we have to take the advantage whatever our vice chancellor is doing for us and another is, one thing is that i will tell you who has given the lecture right now dr ryan perira he is not a us resident he is a indian resident he is from bombay now you might heard this lecture and you might think that uh, dr ryan is american he is not american he is a uh, indian and he want to take this advantage to our mpk v rauri students to give some fellowship under different uh, different format that means uh, post doctorate then seminars workshop and other thing so take this advantage if you have any difficulties contact to the our associate dean i will be there i am giving some lectures on the different higher education opportunities in foreign countries in that case i am giving so many other information also and if you have anything regarding the few bright you can ask to associate dean as well as me i will be there with this word i will thank the our honorable vice chancellor who has given the chance to the our uh, students to get this fellowship and i hope in future more and more student from mpq rauri will go for foreign countries under the few bright fellowship thank you i request our honorable vice chancellor both sir please a uh, very good afternoon to all of you and uh, on behalf of our mpkv rahuri i extend a very warm welcome to ryan perera who is a regional officer united states india education foundation full bright commission in india <clears throat> as uh, you are aware that <clears throat> almost 9 uh, months back <clears throat> there was a meeting at the consulate general of america <clears throat> uh in which uh, vice chancellors of various selected universities from maharashtra they have called <clears throat> pune university bombay university i think uh, mpk we from agriculture university i was alone <clears throat> then veterinary university our dr paturkar was there and almost 6 uh, 7 vice chancellors selected vice chancellors <clears throat> were invited for that meeting and uh, that time uh, <clears throat> consulate general was honorable david rans and there was a long discussion about the cooperation between india and uh, america regarding the educational <clears throat> research teaching and some professional developments and uh, by uh, while seeing you the presentation you could see so many areas art culture commerce engineering agriculture and so many areas are there <clears throat> and uh, in that meeting it has been decided actually that meeting was uh, organized <clears throat> with the help of our uh, 
governor office actually governor office has taken a lead in uh, organizing this meeting <clears throat> and it was uh, decided that uh, uh, that uh, such kind of uh, activities fellowships opportunities should be made available to the our students also and i inquired uh, in our my colleagues in university i think uh, we did not uh, get any fulbright scholarship till now and it is a very actually uh, not good thing for university you prepare for any examination that is not there but uh, those who are interested in research going outside they should also concentrate on these activities and this is a very good opportunity <clears throat> if you look at the volume of amount of scholarship it is 80000 dollar for 2 years it comes to around 56 lakh rupees for 2 years duration and it is a huge amount and uh, you have nothing to spend from your pocket so <clears throat> this is good opportunity and <clears throat> i am very thankful to dr ryan parera that he came all the way from mumbai to make awareness among you because such kind of uh, scholarships are available and you can avail that <clears throat> because in i think i have passed out in 1991 from this college agriculture engineering college you might be aware of and at that time then we have selected ars and become a scientist and that time i also got selected as a account finance class 1 but i did not join <laughs> because uh, i was aiming for ias and you are also aiming for ias that's why i am also having some sympathy with you but the success rate is uh, very less so i have decided to be in uh, agriculture system research system and you see i became a vice chancellor now that one um, now you may be aware that on <clears throat> aicrp on integrated farming system research workshop is going on around almost 150 or 180 uh, scientists have come there and if you look at the percentage of our marathi scientists there is a, nobody is there that's why we have celebrated one ars i think who is name is vani ya teli teli i think two uh, two students have been selected in ars one i think teli and one miss kukde uh, process engineering so we have actually uh, felicitated him so in nutshell i will not take much time uh, because he has to go to aurangabad he has given some lectures in nagar college for arts commerce now he has come over here he has given you a lecture now he has to go to aurangabad for next his mission is to make more and more awareness among the scientific students that these facilities are available you avail that you complete that and he has rightly pointed out that many iits are getting the scholarship but uh, if you are not trying for such kind of scholarships then how you will get it so i think uh, if people or students are ready they can come to the edpg so that we can <coughs> we have make a team of our professors to guide you to make a report presentation and uh, which will be very helpful for you so but you have to initiation has to come from your side so with this word i stop here and once again on behalf of all the students of mpkv rahuri i extend uh, heartfelt thanks to ryan parera for coming over here and uh, giving you you the very beautiful and from his slide also you might have learned many things how slide should be what is the color combination how many words should be there in one slide isn't it not the otherwise what we do in presentation times roman font so much text huh so it is very colorful and impressive presentation and if you have any doubt you come to me you come to adpg and uh, we will help you out for this endeavor with this i stop you. thank you thank you sir i request our associate dean bhakra sir for out of thanks please
good afternoon all of you uh, honorable vice chancellor sir dr uh, ryan parera uh, dean dr yudhi chawan sir uh, director of extension education dr nurute sir all the faculty members and student friends i am over here to propose the vote of thanks uh, today it's a day for all of you to see that the doors are open for you in us through fulbright scholarship and this particularly we can see that uh, this opportunity is being given to us uh, through the ideas of our honorable vice chancellor honorable pg patil sir as uh, dr yud chawan sir had told you that uh, he had a meet uh, with the consulate and that's why we could fetch this opportunity to have dr ryan here so at the this juncture i uh, thank you dr pg patil sir honorable vice chancellor who is always a leading force for us and uh, a dynamic leadership which is taking this university to different heights and so so thank you very much sir then it's my heartfelt thanks to dr ryan parera because uh, he being uh, from mumbai and being an biochemist is involved in this area of showing the students a way to go for the scholarships and learn in abroad that is in usa and have the fulbright scholarships or fellowships and see that uh, how the indian government also supports you and he is very much keen that our indian students should go more and more there and have their future brighten up there in usa so thank you very much sir for coming over here and uh, giving such a wonderful presentation which is very uh, uh, in a very short time the students could know that how we can apply and what's the what are the dates of the deadlines and all that so that thank you very much again now i'll i'm very much thankful to do our also behind us to have this program and having been completed his uh, phd from uh, canada and post doctor from uk he is also very much expert in uh, foreign country deliberations and that's why he can be a source of right information uh, inspiration for all of you and that's why uh, we can have so much of uh, guidance from him and so thank you very much sir for attending this program and having you here i also thank dr narute sir the a uh, director of extension education of mpkb rauri very much instrumental in uh, the extension work and also very much uh, improvised uh, having so much of uh, the extension education of uh, this formality for the students also so thank you very much sir i also thank all the faculty members i also thank the uh, dif uh, uh, different uh, departments uh, wherein they have uh, the a uh, progress of uh, having the phd programs and they will definitely try to see that how their students will go for the fulbright scholarship for maybe for post doctoral or we can have a program as he said for 6 to 9 months the entrants the newly entrants can try for this having the research topic of uh, uh, you can select the research topic having one paper and going uh, uh, having the mails to those authors whether as dr ryan has rightly said that you can contact them so the the, the staff of the department or the faculties can very well uh, initiate their students to go for so thank you very much all the faculty members and of course the students who you are all here in a large number so i think you will be the uh, uh, benefited through this lecture and so thank you very much for joining this uh, very important lecture so and also i thank the pg staff or the pgi uh, the uh, associate dean office staff for arranging all this dr mr patil sir for having all this and then not least the all the associate deans the students and the faculty members those who have joined online they are in huge number they have joined so thank you very much all and thank you very much everybody thank you very much i request everyone this program is uh, stopped by our national anthem for national anthem i request everyone
Please stand up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 